Hey guys, welcome back. Episode 20 of our Pontiac Rebuild. And wow, it's been a journey. So thanks for hanging out. If you're new here, check it out. That's how it all started. Broken lifter, blah, blah, blah. Had to take the motor out. But we made some modifications along the way, mainly paint related, but we learned a lot. And now we're ready to put the distributor in. And I'm going to do this now while the engine's outside the car so I can get a better uh, viewing angle. Personally, I have to do it when it's in the car, and I'll get to uh, why in a second. <sighs> so, here we go. We're going to put the distributor in today, and my choice of a distributor is by uh, DUI. It actually has the high spark coil in the distributor cap, but you can also get an MSD system. Uh, there's several brands on the market. There's even uh, the standalone kind with the spark and, um, management, etc. But the most important thing we need to talk about is if you have a roller cam. If you have a roller cam, you need to change the distributor gear. You have to go and get a polymer version. The reason you want a polymer version is if the gear should jam or gall or shred or whatever you want a relatively soft material to give way because you don't want to damage the camshaft you'd much rather have this blow up than the cam if this shreds the particles are super fine and soft will not damage your engine and will get caught in the filter that's why that exists who knew so Basically what happens is on your stock distributor, there is a dowel pin. You can see it right here. You just take a drift and you, and you can punch that out. And this is uh, the composite gear from BOP Engineering that I put on and then I put the dowel pin in. So, and mine's still a little dirty. Okay guys, so I had some second thoughts on changing this distributor gear out because I mentioned it was dirty. Well, a couple of the teeth actually show a little bit of excess wear probably happened when um, the lifter blew up or something happened in the motor so better safe than sorry I'm gonna go ahead and change this out and might as well show you guys how it's done so I have um, it's called a drift or a punch it's the same diameter a little as the dowel pin and you just put it right on the dowel pin and I have a support this happens to be a block I had laying around. I have another 2x4 underneath. It's nice and level. And I'm going to lightly tap it with my hammer. Let's see if we can get it to budge. There we go. And it's out. Then we can take her just take it off and you can see how it, how it works. I have a little um, bearing plate. Make sure that stays on. And there's a bushing. Our washer, make sure that stays. You can kind of see some wear on this tooth here and here. So these three teeth have some wear. So it could have been at the point of impact when the lifter broke. Who knows? But put a new one on. Here's the new one from BOP. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description uh, where I got it. I think I bought it from Butler Performance, but you can get it from BOP Engineering as well. This is a half inch diameter, which is for Pertronics and um, DUI distributors. The stock one, I think, is 420 thousandths. It's not a half inch. Um, so then on the back, there's some instructions and there's some guidance here. So you, when we check for play, that's how much play you want. Um, again, a Pontiac Motors, it's a little bit different and I'll explain that. but. Uh, that's some good guidance on the back, and we'll go ahead and put it on. All right, so here's the new uh, gear, and it comes with a new pin. I'm going to go ahead and start the pin in the gear. 
by taking my little assembly apart here. Just use my same same block here. I'll start it like this because it'll be a lot more difficult to hold multiple pieces together where you're trying to push it in. So when I when I hammered this in, you can kind of see the dowel pin is slightly protruding in, into the inside bore. That's exactly what you would want to have because when we put it on our shaft and make sure our washers are lined up, you can actually feel it. Where the hole is so that helps you determine where the center of the hole so you're lined up and now I'll get it started all right it's so clearly through the hole and as we get closer I don't want to hit the gear, so I have a, a bigger diameter punch, and I'm going to go till it's flush. Because you know you'll know you're flush when you're when it stops on the OD of the journal. There we go. Flush on both sides. Perfect. And so before we put this in the car, definitely want to put some assembly lube. I'm going to go ahead and put my comp cams, um, lifter lube all over it um, before I final set it in the car. So there you go. That's how you put the uh, distributor cam gear on. But when we put it in the engine, the other thing we need to check for is the play. See how that moves back and forth? We do not want to put it in and have the oil pressure, I'm sorry, not the oil pressure, the oil uh, pump drive shaft. We don't want this pushing on here and pushing on the distributor because we bolt this down that is going to tear up either the distributor or the oil pump and you don't want either to happen so we're going to check that today uh, the good news is most Pontiac motors is pretty straightforward because the the gap is already set from the mold of the block uh, most people have a challenge with Chevrolet motors because the distributor hole is actually on the intake manifold and depending on what heads you have and what intake manifold you have that can vary enough where you have to shim it and there are special tools for that so I'm gonna go get one of the tools you're gonna to need uh, and I'll be right back okay I'm back the tool I had to get is actually a priming tool so what you do is you put the oil in your engine and you put this in where your distributor would go and you attach it it has a mating spline for your oil pump and you put this in a drill and you run it counterclockwise and you do it with your valve covers off and you do it enough where you're priming your oil filter which will be on the side of the block already and you prime it until oil starts to come up into your lifter valley not lifter valley sorry your valve train you're at the head the, the top of your heads and that's when you know you're primed and you can now move to the next step which is putting your distributor in which is what we're going to do now the other thing to note is remember when we talked about putting our uh, harmonic balancer at top dead center you need to verify it's at top dead center you also need to verify that you're at the number one firing order and the way you do that is when you approach top dead center on the harmonic balancer put your finger in the spark plug hole 
of number one. And it will actually push air out. And when you feel it push air, you know you're at the correct top dead center. Remember, if you do another 100, 360 degree rotation of the harmonic balancer, you're 180 degrees out on your cam. So you will not feel the air coming out of the spark plug hole. So that's how you double check you're at top dead center on the compression stroke of number one, which we are. Okay team, when you're putting a distributor in for the first time, you have to pay attention to the clocking of the, the oil pump drive shaft and the clocking of the shaft down there because if you don't have it lined up quite right, it's not going to fully seat. So it's part of the trial and error of putting a distributor in, and it's frustrating. I got mine in. Um, but you're going to have to turn that uh, with a screwdriver, a long bladed screwdriver, turn the, um, the drive shaft of the oil pump until you get it lined up. And so now that we're in, this is actually... where your number one spark plug wire is going to be. So when you put your distributor cap on, that's where number one is going to be. If you need to change the order of where this starts, you have to play with it and determine all your angles. As now that the distributor's in, we want to check for free play in our, in our shaft, in the distributor shaft. So I have some, you can probably see it moving a little bit. You can also hear it clicking. That's good. I don't have to shim it. I can just put a gasket in there and call it good. Now, depending on your motor, your block, your clearances, if you don't hear that clicking or have movement, you have that means this is being held up by the oil pump shaft. So you don't want that. You need to pick up the rotor enough by shimming it so then you have that play. So the shims go right in here, in between the block and um, the distributor, and you can get shim kits. So these little plastic rings are different thicknesses. You can get them at Summit or whoever sells parts, and that's what you do to get. You want to get a, at least a few thousands in there to give enough uh, a play, so you're not preloading the system. There we go. We're all done. We can put the engine back in. My God, it took forever, but it looks spectacular. I hope you learned something. If you did, hit like. Um, the most important thing to note is you definitely want to set your wire locations before going in the car and mark it on the block where your final setting is. So if you do have to take your distributor out like I do to prime it, then it's easy to put back in and you're all set. I will put the firing order down below, remember it's counterclockwise, and that'll help everyone. And But other than that, next, week, next week's episode is going to be awesome. I have a surprise for you. I've been debating telling you what it is, but I'm not going to do it. It's a long overdue project that I have to do inside the engine bay uh, before the engine goes in. So that's what I'm going to tackle before we put the engine in. I think you're going to like it. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll go from there. So until next time, build them fast and drive them faster. See ya.